Right now, the Packers start the season off with a win. We'll tell you what the team had to say after a dominating defensive effort. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, Wisconsin, and thanks for joining us on this Friday, September 6th. We've got the Badger Red going on today. Oh, we certainly do. Going Very into the excited. first home game tomorrow, and it's looking like a beautiful forecast today and tomorrow. It really is. Temperature is pretty comfortable over the next few days. Let's take a live look outside this morning, show you what's happening here across southern Wisconsin. A little bit of cloud cover moving into the area already, but we still have some clear sky overhead here in Madison. So a little bit of sunshine early on. I think the clouds will rule, though, through the morning. Temperatures at least are a little warmer. We're at 66 here in Madison, 64 in Janesville and Platteville, 66 as well in Prairie du Chien. So definitely not as chilly as it was yesterday at this time. We have temperatures that will climb back into the 70s today despite a north wind and look for some clearing to take place for the afternoon as well. Here's a live look at those traffic maps now. We'll see what's happening here in Madison and around southern Wisconsin. No major delays showing up just yet. Just the usual crowd on the Beltline and Stoughton Road starting to get a little busier there. Uh, around southern Wisconsin, I did look. There aren't any accidents, so you're still going at posted speeds heading into Madison. And I know that it kind of starting to feel like fall, but we're still having some warmer summer temperatures. Yeah, there bit. is still an 80 degree reading in the upcoming <laughs> forecast. We like that. We do. Yeah. All right, thanks, Patty. You're welcome. All right, we begin this half hour with breaking news and the Channel 3000 Alert Center. A driver is facing charges after a high speed chase through Fitchburg, Madison, and the town of Dunn. A Dane County deputy stopped Keelan Seaton in the town of Dunn last night before he started to drive away. The chase reached speeds as high as 94 miles an hour and ended after Seton hit a curb in a Fitchburg roundabout. He now faces charges for eluding, bail jumping, and was cited for operating after suspension. No one was hurt and nothing was damaged as a result of that chase. Packers fans might be waking up a little sleepy this morning, but mostly excited after last night's big win over Chicago. With a lackluster offense and penalties, the Bears weren't doing themselves any favors. At one point, the Bears put themselves in a first and 40 situation. It was an impressive showing for the Packers defense, but head coach Matt LaFleur's revamped offense started off slow. However, they seem to wake up in the second quarter, going 74 yards in just over 90 seconds for the first touchdown of the season. Late in the fourth, Bears were in scoring range, down by a touchdown when the Packers defense intercepted a pass. Final score, Packers 10, Bears 3. Kevin Lewis has the post-game reaction from Chicago. <laughs> Linebacker Blake Martinez was a little excited after the Packers 10-3 win over the Bears. And it wasn't as easy as Martinez made it sound, but Green Bay needed a shutdown performance from its defense, and they got it. We kind of talked throughout uh, the offseason and training camp and everything of just being special and being that defense that can go out and win a game. And we had a, a great opponent to go against. They had a lot, of, a lot of different moving parts, a lot of things, fly motions, kind of window dressing all over the field. And we, we did what we needed to do, and we... Let a couple plays here and there, but never let them uh, get a score off it. We keep harping on the little things, man. We're going to be dominant and be great as a team. But uh, how you feel about it? And I feel like, man, it's just a building block, man. We, this is the start of something great, man. Yeah. Guys got their head on straight. Uh, we're going to go out there, man. We're going to watch the film, be critical of ourselves, come out next week a whole lot stronger. The much-talked-about Packers' new-look offense showed flashes, but they only produced one touchdown, a fact that will not go unnoticed after they watch the game film but it's always better to correct mistakes after a win. First time for us going out there, showing the offense. And uh, I mean, it's a good defense. So you couple all that together in road game, uh, division rival. Uh, there's going to be some ups and some downs. But uh, the way you look at it is uh, come out with a win in their home. Week one, that's what you want to be. Head coach Matt LaFleur got the game ball after the win. He becomes the first Green Bay head coach to win his coaching debut against the Bears since a guy named Vince Lombardi did it in 1959. Now the Packers get a couple of extra days off before they play another division game against the Vikings at Lambeau. At Soldier Field, I'm Kevin Lewis. News 3 Now this morning. Kevin, thank you to other headlines we're following this morning. A viral Facebook post is warning locals about a man using a story to scam people out of money at gas stations. The post has been shared by over 4,000 people so far, and the comments relate similar experiences. A man approaches strangers and asks for money to get home, and according to the comments, he's been spotted in Madison and as far away as La Crosse. 
The story found sounded familiar to Phil Gooding. He came up and gave me this sob story of him forgetting his wallet in lacrosse, and he had no money and had no way to get up there to get the wallet. And I'm like, if something doesn't add up. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't have any cash on me. I can't help you. Gas stations mentioned in the comments say they were not aware of this man. The Better Business Bureau says you'll want to be cautious with all requests like this. Know where the money is going and make sure it's a legitimate cause. They say that if you're approached in a parking lot, chances are it's not legit. They say to think with your head before your heart. If you have a question about a scam, a suspicious business, or any consumer question or complaint, our Call for Action volunteers are always here for you Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 11 to 1. Just call them at the number on your screen, 608-270-2833. Madison police have named a new suspect in a hit-and-run crash that killed a man last month. They say the wrong man was initially charged for the crash, which happened along East Washington Avenue on August 8th. A 32-year-old Madison man was originally charged those charges have now been dropped. Police originally thought he was the one driving the BMW that collided with an SUV, but they found he was actually the passenger. Now, 44-year-old Jason Nacone of Oregon is facing charges as the driver, including homicide by intoxicated use of a motor vehicle and hit and run involving death. There are still no developments in Fitchburg regarding the murder investigation for a Verona High School student. 17-year-old Shay Watson was shot to death right off of Fish Hatchery Road on Lyman Lane. Police said at the time that it wasn't a random act, but haven't been able to tell us any new information in the nearly two weeks since that homicide. A not guilty plea is being entered on behalf of the man charged in Madison's first homicide of the year. 58-year-old Lou Jefferson stood mute in court yesterday. The Chicago native faces first-degree intentional homicide charges for stabbing 30-year-old Amanda Woods in the Darbo neighborhood. According to a criminal complaint, Woods left a party to buy cigarettes at a gas station, and the two got into an argument over drugs. The Oostburg community is remembering and honoring a marine biologist and veteran diver who was one of 39 people who died in the California dive boat fire on Labor Day. Kirstie Finstead graduated from Oostburg High School in 1996 where her principal remembers her as a high positive, high energy world changer. He found out on the first day of school that she had died in that boat fire. It's a little bit of a dark cloud here. Uh, most of us know the family quite well. Uh, her parents uh, have been involved and very connected to our district. So, you know, our, our hearts just go out to the family. Finstead started scuba diving when she was just nine years old. She was a certified instructor who took over her family's dive company, which chartered the boat that caught fire. Finstead was 41 years old. The Dane County Health Department is urging everyone to stop vaping. Right now, there are 34 confirmed hospitalizations from severe lung disease and damage in Wisconsin credited to vaping. That's just a portion of the 200 cases across the U.S. that are being investigated. Public Health Madison in Dane County said most of the cases involve using e-cigarettes or other vaping devices to inhale THC products, but they said using them for nicotine is dangerous too. Since these products aren't regulated, what's in the bottle might not be exactly what you predict. These products are completely unregulated. So there is no regulation at a state or federal level. So we don't know what's in them, whether it's THC or nicotine products. Now, public health says even though you can use these products in your home, you should be aware of the risks to yourself and others. The Racine County Sheriff's Department keeps finding large quantities of THC cartridges. THC is the main psychoactive compound in marijuana. Sheriff Schmaling says they think the cartridges are coming through I-94, but they don't know if it's being produced locally or in states where marijuana is legal. A recent Milwaukee County criminal complaint says drug dealers are telling police they can make up to $2 million a month selling it. They say each cartridge is a $5 profit, which means they'd have to sell $400,000 a month to make that kind of money. Coming up next, our attention is turning today from the Packers to the Badgers. We'll tell you how a former star player is working to change the drinking culture on UW game days after his own battles with addiction. And first, Hattie's got a look at a cool and cloudy weekend in her extended forecast. A live look outside as we see a little sunshine to start off on this Friday. Stick around. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. We thank you for that, and we will be right back.
Good morning from the Hattie O patio. We're starting with pretty quiet conditions this morning. There was a slight chance for a shower or two, but that's not really materializing here across southern Wisconsin. Take a look at the radar map and you'll see that things are pretty quiet here in southern Wisconsin. A cold front is currently moving through the area and as it does, uh, move off to the east. It'll take all chances for rain with it as well. So a wider view showing you what's happening. There is a little bit of rain and a few isolated thunderstorms associated with that front to our north and east. But again, that front has passed us here in Madison. Weather track showing you that uh, a little tough to see, but there are some clouds behind this front. So look for quite a few clouds as we go through the morning hours today. Some clearing though is expected for the afternoon. Now winds have shifted to the west northwest here in Madison, so we know the front has passed. It's a little easier to see the location on that front, but we plot the winds out ahead of it. Still in Chicago, winds from the south, so the front has not moved through the Milwaukee or Chicago areas just yet. Here's a look at your temperatures across southern Wisconsin. Not seeing a big contrast in temps one side or the other from this front. Temperatures are generally in the mid 60s this morning, which is quite a bit warmer than it was yesterday at this time. Future track forecast model again showing you all the clouds with this system moving from north to south today. Still likely to see quite a few clouds at the lunch hour, but for the afternoon, I think the clouds will finally start to clear out of here. North winds and highs in the low to mid 70s expected this afternoon. Very comfortable this evening with temperatures dropping back through the 60s, mostly clear skies overnight. We'll start with some sunshine on Saturday, but if you're headed to the Badger game downtown Camp Randall, look for an increase in the clouds through the day tomorrow. The forecast though actually looking pretty nice. Temperatures will be right around 70 as you tailgate and then holding right around 70 even through the fifth quarter. So comfortable for the fans. Maybe a little bit on the warm side for the players, though. Again, cloudy skies, no rain, and just a light northwesterly wind. Here's a look at that extended forecast then. We have temperatures that will drop a little bit for Sunday. The second part of the weekend has a chance for a few showers, especially as we get later in the day. Highs will only be in the upper 60s. Still not done with those summertime temps, though. We're back to 80 on Tuesday, and we'll hit a high of 78 on Wednesday. Now it's time to get a look at your News 3 Now first alert traffic maps. We'll send it over to Jason Stone for all the details. Good morning, Jason. Good morning. No issues this morning on the Beltline. All lanes are at or near the posted speed limit for commuters. Brake lights popping up on Verona Road between the Beltline and Highway PD in both directions. Otherwise, all routes into Madison and around Dane County are clear. And everything is going smooth downtown and around campus at this time. With your first alert traffic, I'm Jason Stone. All right, Jason and Hattie, thank you very much. Well, you probably remember former Badger Monte Ball for all his success on the field and at Camp Randall, as well as his struggles with addiction and an arrest that cut his professional career short. Now he's working to change the drinking culture on game days, and he joins our Christina Laurie live this morning with what he's up to now. Christina, good morning to you. Good morning, Josh and Keeley. Monty Ball is proof you don't need alcohol to have fun at a Badger game. Yes, even here in the state of Wisconsin. Tomorrow, Monty Ball will be out here cheering on the Badgers at Camp Randall, but this morning, he's here with us. Good morning. So, what is the idea this season during the away games? You're going to be hosting a series of like sober tailgate parties over at Marcus Palace. Can you talk about those? Yeah, it's honestly something that uh, I wanted to kind of put together, something fun for the fans who may be living in the DeForest area, Marshall, Wanake, um, who don't want to kind of come down here and experience the Badger experience while the Badgers are away, and also create a family environment. So teamed up with Marcus Plus Theater to kind of give fans what they want, that experience uh, with their families and uh, some good service. And so it's been a while since you've been on the field here at Camp Randall, but I can't not address your amazing career with the Badgers. What was the best part of playing for the team? Honestly, I'd have to say the fans. Um, other than teammates, of course, I played with some greats, Russell Wilson, J.J. Watt, Melvin Gordon, James, et cetera. Plenty more, excuse me if I'm missing you, but um, the fans, man. It's always been the fans since uh, the day I accepted my full, uh, full right scholarship here to, to my last day. It's, it's been a heck of a ride and I most definitely miss it. <laughs> and you've been through a lot since yeah. you d d uh, you know got rid of your Badgers yeah. uniform. You <laughs> traded in for a pro team then you went through that. What were the fans like during all of those circumstances? That's honestly why I always say it's about the fans. It really is because um, my fans most definitely have forgiven me 
um, mainly because of the steps that I've taken, um, owned up to my mistakes and everything. And, and they've been true to, to me and uh, their Badgers <laughs> um, ever since I've, you know, became a Badgers fan. Um, so it's one of those things that uh, I believe they're second to none when it comes to college football or, or college fans all across the country. Thanks so much for talking to us. And we're going to keep you out here. At, coming up at 6.30, we're going to get Monty Ball's predictions for the Badgers season this year. He doesn't know that I'm going to ask them yet, so he's going to be formulating those, Keely and Josh. All right, Christina Laurie live at Camp Randall this morning. Christina, thank you. Well, this weekend in theaters, a new movie opens that might just scare your, your socks, socks off. off. I'm not wearing socks, but it's probably very <laughs> good scary. To go. <laughs> yeah, they're already off. I'm so scared. The movie is <laughs> it, Chapter 2, and here with the preview is our film critic, Will Loper. Good morning, Will. Good morning, guys. So I just really need to warn all viewers out there, if any of you have an unhealthy fear of clowns, now is the time to leave the room. The rest of us should be okay. You know, the sun is coming out. It's not too scary yet. Take a look at it. <laughs> 27 years, I dreamt of you, I craved you, I missed you. The children who thought they defeated Pennywise are now all grown up and discover that maybe that pesky clown is still alive. We need to finish it. us from the inside, until we don't have a choice anymore. Bill Hader, Jessica Chastain, James McAvoy, and more star in the Stephen King adaptation. It Chapter 2 is rated R. Whew. Even the preview looks Kitty so wise. frightening. <laughs> Those red balloons, oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people have been traumatized by uh, grates in the street and sewers and clowns growing up, so. Perfect, though. I mean, we are getting kind of into the Halloween season, That's so. right, again, the fall, spooky season. Spooky, spooky season. season, yeah. And this one, the first one made a ton of money, broke all kinds of records. This one's looking to make more money. It's two hours and 49 minutes long, Holy though. Cow. I know. I just, I really like the first one, but that's asking a lot. Yeah, you gotta pack a lot of snacks. I a lot will. of popcorn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on, nachos, yeah. jerky. I'll uh, probably fall asleep with that. With, I mean, no sleep. No the way sleep, is, yeah. So. <laughs> you wouldn't be scared awake through the whole well, thing? That's Actually, true. I probably would be. Asleep. I will fall asleep during that one. That's You'll hear me screaming. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Will. Yeah, thank you, guys. Well, kids are wrapping up the first week of school today, and Beloit police are trying to make sure their kids are getting there safely. We'll tell you how ahead. And speaking of school, Hattie's got your bus stop forecast coming right up. This is News 3 Now this morning. We'll be right back after this. Cobra's
624 on a Friday morning. We've made it to the start of the weekend and really a beautiful start out there for both today and tomorrow. Maybe some showers later on, though. Yeah, maybe a few on Sunday, but rain's not going to be the big weather feature this weekend. We're definitely going to see some clouds and we're already seeing some of those clouds here in Madison. Here's the view from the Edgewater Sky Cam. A low deck of clouds moving in and it's tough to find on weather track, but those clouds extend all the way back into the northern part of the state. So it's definitely going to be a cloudy start to this Friday but some clearing is expected. Along with those clouds, though, we're talking warmer temperatures. Now, these numbers are not the actual temperature. It's the difference in temperature between now and this time yesterday. So we're about 15 to 20 degrees warmer in many locations this morning. Here are the actual numbers. 64 in the Dells, 67 this morning in Boscoville, 66 here in Madison, and 63 in Watertown. So as the kids head out the door, they probably don't need a jacket this morning. It's definitely not cold out. Outside. Temperatures will climb a few degrees back into the 70s, but again, look for that clearing to take place. So some sunshine as the bus takes you home this afternoon. And that's your forecast. All right, Hattie, thank you very much. Most kids are back in school this week and in an effort to keep students safe this year, a special sting operation is now underway in one Rock County community this morning. Police in the town of Beloit are increasing patrol to catch drivers illegally passing school buses to better protect students going back to school. It's our youngest kids that are on our buses. We're trying to do everything we can to protect the safety of our students. If they're not safe and comfortable, then learning's not really an option. Last year, 39 citations were handed out for drivers passing stop school buses. Police say the extra patrol will last through the end of next week, but they'll be working with the school district to catch these drivers all school year. They say no matter how big of a hurry you're in, you need to stop for a school bus. Elementary school students in Wisconsin could be required to learn to write in cursive. A new bipartisan bill would require Wisconsin elementary schools to add cursive writing to their curriculums if they don't have it already. The goal is to have students be able to write cursive by the end of fifth grade. Supporters say cursive can improve learning outcomes for children with dyslexia and other learning disabilities, and it's faster and uses different parts of the brain, improving hand-eye coordination. The Wisconsin Association of School Boards says it will likely oppose the bill when it is introduced, saying curriculum decisions should be left up to the schools, not to the state legislature. Well, still ahead, we've got the top three things you need to know this morning before you head out the door. And a former Badgers football player is trying to help make tailgates fun for those who struggle with addiction. We'll show you how on News 3 Now this morning.
From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning and thanks for staying with us on this Friday, September 6th. And Hattie, it's starting to look a little cloudy out there. Yeah, five minutes ago we could see blue sky on the sky camera shot, but now it's completely cloudy here in Madison. Uh -oh. What's happening? <laughs> we don't like that. Don't worry, the clouds <laughs> will leave this afternoon. All right, some good news. We'll get to that forecast here in just a little bit. But first, let's get to the top three things that you need to know on this Friday morning. First up, Packers fans are waking up probably a little sleepy this morning, but mostly excited after last night's big win over Chicago. With a lackluster offense and penalties, the Bears weren't doing themselves any favors. Final score, Packers 10. Bears 3. And a viral Facebook post is warning locals about a man using a story to scam people out of money at gas stations. A man approaches strangers and asks for money to get home. Now, according to the comments, he's been spotted in Madison and as far away as La Crosse. The Better Business Bureau says you'll want to be cautious with all requests like this. They say to think with your head, not your heart. Rounding out the top three this morning, Dorian is downgraded to a Category 1 hurricane this morning, but winds could still reach up to 90 miles per hour. Dorian is currently hitting North Carolina's coast with howling winds, sheets of rain and surge flooding. Dorian's outer bands have already created more than a dozen tornadoes and more than 200,000 homes and businesses have lost power so far. 30 people are now confirmed dead in the Bahamas as a result of Hurricane Dorian. Those are the top three things you need to know to get your day started. And here's Hattie with a look at our traffic and weather. Hi, Hattie. Hi, Keely and Josh. We are starting with cloudy skies this morning across southern Wisconsin. A cold front has moved through the area, but the only indication that that front has moved through is the wind direction. Out ahead of the front, winds are from the south. Behind it, they're from the west-northwest. So that front has moved through almost our entire viewing area right now. Here's a look at temperatures. Not a huge difference in temps ahead or behind of this front. Temps will be very similar to what they were yesterday with highs in the low to mid 70s this afternoon. Cloudy skies this morning will clear out though for the afternoon. Here's a look at your first alert traffic maps. We'll get you out the door and show you where the delays are. It is starting to get a little busier on the Beltline at Stoughton Road, so some delays showing up there now. A little busy at Park Street as well and some volume issues starting to form in the downtown areas early this morning. If you're headed into Madison from the surrounding communities, looks like you're still going at posted speeds though into the city. And that's your first alert traffic. Thank you, Hattie. We're just a day away from kickoff as the Badgers play in front of a revved up home crowd for their first game of the season. Yeah, college game days bring an electric atmosphere to campus with many pregame parties fueled by alcohol. It's a culture a familiar face is working to change with a special kind of tailgate. Christina Laurie joins us live from Camp Randall with a very special guest to explain. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Josh and Keeley. So we are out here with Monty Ball this morning, who is making headlines nowadays for all of the right reasons. One of those is a special type of tailgates that he hosts during all away games. The Badgers are home this weekend, but can you talk about what happens during away games? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's something that I really wanted to put on uh, for the fans, and it's it's an environment I wanted to create for families who obviously want to bring their children to the Badger atmosphere and let them experience it, and those who um, kind of want to get away from the bar atmosphere. And what I've done is I teamed up with Marcus Palace Theater, where um, first off, you're going to get great service from them. Two, you get to um, eat and enjoy the football game in the Bistro Theater and um, take photos, hang out with me, and let's talk Badger football. What caused you to get so involved in this? Um, yeah, my, my goal ever since I retired from football and ever since my journey of everything, um, therapy, et cetera, has been to continue to give back to people. Honestly, it's the greatest reward. Um, I feel like I owe it to my fans for um, welcoming me back into, uh, you know, their lives, you know, obviously from everything that I've gone through. Um, and it's kind of something that I, I just thoroughly enjoy. Once a Badger, always a Badger. And I'd be remiss not to ask your predictions for this season. Where are Wisconsin going to finish? I know they moved up to 17th in the polls this yeah. week. Yeah, it's, oh gosh. I, obviously, our, our, our test is coming against Michigan. Um, but me being biased, of course, always being a diehard fan, I do truly believe we'll make it to the cha championship this year. We just really got to do it. We really got to pull through this year, and I think we will. I'm putting a lot of pressure on you, Jonathan Taylor. If you're listening, if you see this, you got to make it happen for these boys, man. And one quick tidbit, you were talking about those bleachers behind us. You have a little PTSD. <laughs> yes. What what drill happened up there? Oh, my gosh, man. So um, we would have to, our strength coach would uh, strap us, chain us, excuse me, uh, to other players, four uh, groups of fours, and we carry 100-pound sandbags up the stadium. Um, 
and it would be there'd be no time. It's just the last team standing wins. So it's safe to say you will not be sitting in those seats tomorrow because you will never want to be in, climbing up those stairs again. <laughs> no. But you can catch Monty here at Camp Randall. He'll be here for the game tomorrow and then catch him during every away game at Marcus Palace Cinema in Sun Prairie. Josh and Keeley. Great to see Monty doing so well. Thank you, Christina. All right, 635 right now coming up in the morning sprint. We'll have the latest on a brush fire in California that's destroyed 2000 acres in one day alone. And the Ironman competition is coming to Madison this weekend. That means thousands of people are here and a bunch of road closures that could affect how you get around. We'll tell you what to watch out for up next on News 3 Now this morning. Welcome back at 639. We've been asking you to share your morning with us and Gwen posted this picture of such a pretty pink and blue sky. Beautiful photo from Gwen. Thank you so much for sharing. So what does your morning look like? We'd love to see it. All you got to do is take a picture and post it to our social media pages using the hashtag my news three morning so we can pick out our favorites and air them right here on news three now this morning. If you're looking for something to do this weekend in the 608, you may want to check out some of the best athletes in the Midwest who will be in Madison this weekend for the annual Ironman Wisconsin triathlon. The competition starts with the swimming portion of the race starting at 640 Sunday morning at Minnesota. Nona Terrace. The biking portion will cover a total of 112 miles across Dane County before the race wraps up with a marathon through downtown Madison and the UW campus. Of course, the finish is then on MLK Boulevard. The race means plenty of road closures for the biking and running portions. In the city of Madison alone, closures for the biking will last from around 730 in the morning until 530 Sunday evening. That includes East Lakeside Street, east of John Nolan Drive, Olin Turville Court, the Beltline on and off ramps from Rimrock Road and Badger Road west of Rimrock. 
The running route will also have some major streets closed from noon until midnight on Sunday. That includes much of the Capitol Square, State Street, Langdon Street, University Avenue, Monroe Street, and West Dayton. Because of all of those closures, we'll have links and maps to those at channel3000.com. You can get ready for a future weekend in the 608 today when tickets for Freak Fest go on sale. The annual Halloween concert returns to the Capitol Square and State Street on October 26th. This year's lineup was announced earlier this week with Lil Yachty and the Gin Blossom serving as the headliners. You can get your tickets starting at 10 this morning online or at a number of Madison stores. Our friends at Madison Magazine have a list of those locations over on our website, channel3000.com. Are you going to go to that? Uh, probably not. We're getting into the spooky <laughs> season, though. We are. I'm excited for fall. I love fall. All right, 641 right now. and Just a beautiful start to this first full weekend of September. Here's a live look outside as the sun, well, it's coming up. You can't see with all those clouds cloudy. out there, but Hattie says we're gonna see that sunshine. It's gonna be bright later today. Her updated weekend forecast is coming up next. But first, it's Friday, September 6th, and we wanna say happy birthday to Camden, William, Oliver, and Vivian, and all the other kiddos turning three today. Thanks for celebrating with us on News 3 Now this morning. We'll be right back.
Good morning from the News 3 Now First Alert Weather Center. We have clouds in the area this morning. No rain, but take a look over here. This is Hurricane Dorian. You can see the bands of that eye wall inside the outer banks. So that storm system rolls up the coastline. Good news, or if there is any good news with this, it is moving more quickly. So it's going to move out of the area pretty fast today. But here are the latest details on this storm. It has been downgraded to a Category 1 storm. It is just skirting along the coastline line moving to the northeast at 14 miles an hour. So it has increased in forward speed over the last several hours and that increase in speed is expected to continue. Now by lunchtime today still relatively close to the coastline there coastline there was will still be some rain bands moving through but by later on this afternoon into this evening that storm is well out into the Atlantic and it continues on that path uh, headed towards Nova Scotia sometime on Saturday. So it will move rather quickly. That's about the only good news. Still plenty of rain expected along the coast in the Carolinas. Major airports, though, aren't reporting any delays right now. As you can imagine, things are nearly stopped, though, in the uh, new uh, eastern part of the country with that uh, storm system moving through. Here's your travel forecast, though. If you are traveling today, Look at these temperatures across the southern tier of the United States. It is very warm. 97 today in Tulsa, flirting with 100 in Dallas and San Antonio, and triple digit heat in Phoenix, 108 degrees. Sunshine and hot conditions for the entire southern tier of the United States. By contrast, the upper Midwest is much more comfortable. We have a lot of clouds this morning, but we'll see some sunshine once high pressure moves in from the west. The culprit for those clouds, this storm system and cold front that has now passed east of Madison. A lot of wraparound clouds, though, lingering this morning. Not a lot of rain, though, with this front. You're not going to notice a huge temperature difference either. On either side of this front, 67 in Chicago, 68 in Springfield, still 65 in Minneapolis. So temperatures should be very similar to what they were yesterday. We are starting off warmer, though, with clouds in place. Temperatures this morning are in the 60s. A few spots dropped into the 50s briefly, but we're warming quickly. Temperatures will climb back into the upper 60s to around 70 by lunchtime. Notice at lunchtime, though, still a lot of clouds in the area. Northwesterly winds will finally bring in some drier air. We should see some sunshine for the afternoon with highs in the low to mid 70s. Very comfortable this evening then with temperatures dropping through the 60s under clear skies. And for tomorrow, if we head to the Badger game, starting out with sun but ending up with clouds. So likely cloudy through the game. No rain, though, in the forecast with temperatures in the 70s. The Ironman is this weekend, and here's the forecast for all those athletes. Athletes on Sunday a little cooler, but I don't think anyone's complaining about that. There will be a chance for a few showers as well. Not a guarantee, but that chance in the forecast on Sunday. Here's a look at your extended forecast. Still a little summer left with highs back to 80 on Tuesday. Our pet walk forecast this morning. This is Pooh mm -hmm. in Madison. Oh. What a cool name. Pooh definitely has uh, his eye on something. Yeah, I don't Pooh know what it is. is. I love that it's being name. Being sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> Winnie the Pooh was my favorite as a child, so I love that name. Love Pooh. All right. Cool. Well, thank you so much, <laughs> You're Eddie. You're welcome. Stay with us for the morning sprint after the break.
Welcome back. It is 6.51 and it's time for the morning sprint as we bring you all the local news you need to start your Friday. We begin with breaking news into the Channel 3000 Alert Center overnight. A driver is facing charges after a high-speed chase through Dane County. A Dane County deputy stopped Keelan Seaton in the town of Dunn last night and shortly after started driving away. The chase reached speeds as high as 94 miles per hour and ended when the car was disabled after hitting a curb in a roundabout. Seaton is now facing charges for eluding bail or eluding bail jumping and was cited for operating after suspension. Packers fans might be waking up a little sleepy this morning, but mostly excited after last night's big win over Chicago. With a lackluster offense and penalties, the Bears weren't doing themselves any favors. A shining moment for the Packers offense after going 74 yards in just over 90 seconds for the first touchdown of the season and the only one of the game. Final score, Packers 10, Bears 3. We're just a day away from kickoff here at Camp Randall, and although pre- and post-game parties are usually fueled by alcohol, a familiar face, a former Badger, is working to change that. Former Badger pro football player Monty Ball is hosting a series of game day watch parties this season at local theaters. For last week's season opener, Ball was at the Marcus Palace Theater in Sun Prairie watching the game with diehard fans. He says his goal is to create the Badger football atmosphere for a crowd who isn't interested in bar hopping. You can find Ball this week at the Badger Fest over at Union South. Kickoff for the Badgers first home game of the season is tomorrow at 2.30. Christina, thank you. Chicago fans have something to be happy about this morning. The Cubs beat the Brewers in Milwaukee last night with a final score. Brewers 5, Cubs 10. Last night's win puts the Cubs up five games ahead of the Brewers in the wild card race. And there are only 23 games left in the regular season for the Brewers. They face off again tonight at 7-10. We're starting off a little milder this morning. Temperatures are in the 60s across southern Wisconsin and will climb from there. Headed to highs in the low 70s. Some clearing taking place this afternoon and winds will be from the north around 10 to 15 miles per hour. Thank you, Hattie. Dorian is now downgraded to a Category 1 hurricane this morning, but winds could still reach up to 90 miles an hour. Dorian is currently hitting North Carolina's coast with howling winds, sheets of rain, and surge flooding. Dorian's outer bands have already created more than a dozen tornadoes. More than 200,000 homes and businesses have lost power. Firefighters in California are fighting to contain the Tanaha fire that is currently burning through the brush to the east of Los Angeles. Smoke billowed into neighborhood communities as the fire burned through about 2,000 acres yesterday. Firefighters are still investigating what caused that fire. So far, it is only about 10% contained. The Oostburg community is remembering and honoring a marine biologist and veteran diver who was one of the 39 people who died in the California dive boat fire on Labor Day. Finstead started scuba diving when she was nine. She was a certified instructor who took over her family's dive company, which chartered the boat that caught fire. She was 41 years old. Walgreens, CVS, and Wegmans are the latest companies asking customers to not openly carry firearms in its stores. Earlier this week, Walmart and Kroger did the same thing. The changes come following a string of deadly mass shootings, including one at a Walmart in El Paso that left 22 people dead. A viral Facebook post is warning locals about a man using a story to scam people out of money at gas stations. A man approaches strangers and asks for money to get home. Now, according to the comments, he's been spotted in Madison and as far away as La Crosse. The Better Business Bureau says you'll want to be cautious with all requests like this. They say to think with your head, not your heart. Madison police now have a new suspect in a hit and run last month that killed a man and injured his wife. Police discovered it was the man claiming to be the passenger in the BMW that collided with an SUV who was actually behind the wheel. 44-year-old Jason Natcone of Oregon is facing charges including homicide by intoxicated use of a motor vehicle and hit and run involving death. There are still no developments in Fitchburg regarding the murder investigation for a Verona High School student. 17-year-old Shay Watson was shot to death in his home on Lyman Lane. Police said at the time that it wasn't random, but haven't been able to tell us any new information in nearly two weeks since the homicide. A not guilty plea is being entered on behalf of the man charged in Madison's first homicide of the year. 58-year-old Lou Jefferson stood mute in court yesterday. The Chicago native faces first-degree intentional homicide charges for stabbing 30-year-old Amanda Woods in the Darbo neighborhood. According to a com criminal complaint, Woods and Jefferson got into an argument over drugs. The Dane County Health Department is urging everyone to stop vaping right now. There are 34 confirmed hospitalizations from severe lung disease and damage in Wisconsin credited to vaping. 
Public Health Madison and Dane County said most of the cases involve using e-cigarettes or other vaping devices to inhale THC products, but they said using them for nicotine is dangerous too. It is 6.56 and let's turn it over to Jason Stone with a look at your first alert traffic. Clear travel right now on the Beltline, although some brake lights on the westbound lanes near Stoughton Road and Fish Hatch. And John Nolan is moving at the posted speed limit in both directions this morning. With your first alert traffic, I'm Jason Stone. Thank you, Jason. And we're starting with cloudy skies this morning. Here's a look from the Edgewater Sky Cam over downtown Madison. Cloudy skies, no rain from the clouds this morning, though. We have a dry forecast today and a milder start. Temperatures in the 60s this morning will climb back into the 70s this afternoon. Look for clouds to clear after lunchtime today. Here's a peek at that weekend forecast. It's almost here. 73 on Saturday with mostly cloudy skies. Sunday's forecast is a little cooler and there's a chance for rain as well with highs in the upper 60s. We do get back up to around 80 though for a couple of days next week. All Looking right, Patty, yeah. very pleasant. Yeah. 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 Keely, thanks for helping out this week. Very fun. You can join Keely and Chris tomorrow morning. Leah's back next week. Make it a great day and a wonderful weekend. We'll see you Monday.